हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू क्वालिटी फूड सेफ्टी 101 दिस इज अरसलान देयर वाज अ शॉर्ट ब्रेक विद इन आवर हैसप प्लेलिस्ट सम ऑफ यू माइट नो दैट माय फादर इज सफरिंग फ्रॉम कोविड सो आई वाज वेरी बिजी इन दैट सिचुएशन I have made some videos about that also, which I will link uh, in the description if you want to have a look at it about the COVID information, especially in Urdu. Uh, but today's topic uh, will be uh, resuming our HACCP playlist, and today's uh, video is all about the HACCP team. HACCP team is the first step among the twelve steps of Codex logic sequence, and I have made a separate dedicated video about that as well, which I will link here. on top and also in the description so let's start today's video so in today's video we'll talk about six things uh, number one being the definition and the role of the hasap team then the second word would be the characteristics uh, of the team and then the qualifications of the team members then the resources required or needed by the team then their responsibilities and the last one is that the first thing which the team has to do which is to determine the scope and term of reference for the hasap project so uh, this is the full rundown of the video basically now before we start let me give you a perspective about it as well a little bit uh, i ran a poll uh, in my linkedin account uh again if you are, uh, are not following me on linkedin i will leave the link in the description so i ran a poll uh in linkedin and a lot of people had questions about the hasap team uh being the first step in uh, hasap codex logic sequence now there can be a number of teams working in an organization uh, before ha- doing hasap you need to do prps prerequisite programs so for that also you can have a team but that team officially is not called as hasap team uh hasap team is formed at the start of the hasap project which is the start of the 12 steps of the codex logic sequence so let's talk about the hasap team number one uh, point is the uh, definition or the role of the team so basically the hasap team is a group of team members who are responsible to have uh, or to run the hasap project then must develop maintain and implement the hasap within the organization so this is the definition and the role of the team number 2 point is about the characteristics of the team uh, there are two main things to consider here uh, number 1 point among the characteristics is that the team should be multidisciplinary only one department or one person cannot uh, do this job we need people from different different departments and different levels of the organization so let's suppose if it's a manufacturing company you need people from the manufacturing team or operations team you need maintenance you need cleaning uh, team members within the team as well as you need quality food safety team as well so all the different departments combine together uh, to come on a table to do this project of hasap the main idea behind multidisciplinary is that the knowledge pool is collected together to do a proper hasap project Uh, we need to do a lot of uh, brainstorming okay, to find solutions of the you know issues which we have identified during the audits and then to run the project and to complete hasap certification so for all of that we need multidisciplinary team members only one department cannot do that the second uh, thing to consider here is the size of the team now a lot of people think that if a organization is very big they will have a big hasap team it's not necessary it depends on the type and the nature of the product and process if we have a complicated product uh, process or product and which are specialized and there are some people who have specialized knowledge about the process and product they need to be on the team now due to this the time of the uh, the size of the team might increase a little bit but it doesn't matter but on the other hand the organization may be very very big but the product by itself is very less complicated and it doesn't need too much expertise so then the size of the team will be less so it all depends on the requirement uh, to to complete the product uh, sorry to complete the project efficiently and effectively it doesn't matter that how big is the organization or how small the 
then we come to the third part which is the qualifications now uh, with regards to qualification there is no specific guidelines or trainings or the degrees which you need to have uh, within the hasap uh, team members but the, except one which is that the team must have basic understanding of hasap and food safety so a basic level of training for hasap and food safety is necessary apart from that the most and most important thing about the qualification of the team is that they should be or each team member should be the expert of their own field so if you have a, a maintenance team member they need to be expert of their uh, area they need to know in and out of the maintenance and how it impacts the food safety similarly if you have somebody from operations they need to be expert of the operations and uh, product flow and the manufacture of the product not necessarily food safety so if each team member is expert in their own field and they have a proper person which is expert of food safety and hasap as well and together they can do a uh, very good job to complete the project so the qualification is number 1 they need to be basic uh, they need to have basic understanding of uh, hasap and food safety and secondly they need to be expert in their own field apart from that uh, additionally uh, knowledge of uh, you know doing uh, project management is very good the knowledge of uh, investigation and finding root cause analysis is good and also the knowledge of control measures is good as well the fourth element of the today's video is about the resources required by the team uh, in regards to resources the number one thing is of course training uh, about has seven food safety if somebody is not trained then apart from that there are uh, generally simple resources which is like Uh, resources about uh, time management. They need if that if a team is working on a specific project, they need to have uh, some allocated time for that. So time is required. Then uh, they might need some budgets. Uh, they might need some manpower and also some equipment which will help them to achieve this project. So uh, sim in simple words, training, time, uh, support from the management, and access to external information is also necessary as a resource for the. as a team the fifth element of today's video is about the responsibilities of hasap team the first thing to do is to nominate a hasap team uh, leader uh, generally the team leader is the person who will have the most experience about food safety and hasap it could be any person in the organization maybe from operations or from the food safety or quality team but that person uh, needs to lead the team towards the completion of the project apart from that all the other team members are assigned different different roles based on the project and their expertise and that document will be the uh, roles and responsibilities of the team of hasap uh, the team needs to meet as often as possible uh, especially the, at the start of the project they will meet more often so that they can monitor the timelines and the completion rate effectively and later on once the project is completed then uh, they can meet once a quarter or biannually as well the last part of today's video which is the sixth part is the scope and term of reference the first thing the hasap team does after you know they become hasap team is to define the scope of the hasap and the term of reference what are these two words the scope is basically to define the start and the end of the hasap project let's suppose an organization has multiple different uh, you know lines multiple different uh, products so do you want to do all of them together and the hasap project or you want to divide them into categories that's example of a, a scope let's suppose a business is having a a farm from where they get the Uh, animal. Then they have a slaughterhouse. Then from where they get the meat. Then they have a butcher shop where they sell the meat as well. And also they have a restaurant where they uh, cook the said meat and then sell to customers. So this is a whole chain which is under one organization. Do you want to complete hasa for all these elements or all these individual uh, you know uh, entities simultaneously, or you want to do them individually? That. will be all defined in a scope so from where do we start the project and where is the end of the project that's the uh, simple meaning of a scope 
Then we come to the second point, which is the term of reference. Now, this one is very interesting and a little bit confusing to some people as well. There are four major hazards which we have in food safety. Uh, microbiological, physical, chemical and allergens. Now, we consider all four of them in HACCP studies. But in some industries, there are some hazards which are much more critical than the others. Let's suppose if I'm in an industry which is making nuts. So for me, multiplication of microorganisms is not a major hazard because nuts are naturally dry product and they have long shelf life. On the other hand, for me, the multiplication of fungus and aflatoxin production, which is a very critical thing, is very important for me. So in the term of reference, I will identify the key hazards which are going to affect my product, my process and my industry so that my HACCP will be focused on them. The most important thing about HACCP is it is not general. It is specific to the industry, specific to the process and to the product. If it is general study, then it will not be HACCP. It will be a general document about a, uh, you know, about a product or process. It will not serve the purpose of that organization of that company. So we identify key hazards and we write them down at the start of the HACCP project so that we don't uh, stray here and there. For example, in a in a restaurant scenario, uh, allergen management is very very key, but we don't usually include it in HACCP studies. We have a separate policy for allergen management, which is uh, handled by a different uh, you know team, and it is part of the prerequisite program for a, a restaurant industry or a hotel industry. So, if we have a foolproof or a good SOP of allergen management already working then we don't need to complicate it through HACCP as well. So we will write in our term of reference that this uh, HACCP document will be focused on uh, microbiological, physical, chemical hazards uh, and the allergenic hazard is handled through a separate SOP or separate policy. Now it doesn't mean that allergen is not being considered in food safety. It just means that in this HACCP project, we are not considering it and it will be handled through a separate SOP. So this is the sixth element, which is the scope and term of reference. So these are the key elements uh, for understanding the HACCP team. Again, as I said, if before as well in previous videos, if you understand these elements and do them as I'm explaining to you, then your HACCP team document will be very good and no auditor will be able to challenge it. And then you can go to the next step, which is the product and process description, which will be in our next video. Yeah, before we end the video, uh, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, share the content to people uh, who need the knowledge. Uh, we need your support and yeah, thank you and see you in the next one.